VCY America presents Crosstalk, a nationwide call-in program discussing issues that have an effect on our families, our communities, our churches, our nation, and our world. Crosstalk, an opportunity for you to voice your concerns for biblical principles. And now live by satellite and around the world on the Internet at vcyamerica.org. Here is today's Crosstalk. And welcome to Crosstalk. It's our privilege to have you join us today. Brother Jim Schneider has been holding down the fort this past week. We've been in and out of the office and uh, some new construction projects and things going on. So we uh, are very grateful for the kinship and uh, the co-laboring together on Crosstalk. Well, today is coming up on Father's Day. That's uh, this coming Sunday. And... uh, Every day you hear an introduction here uh, to the program, and you usually hear me say, well, thank you, Mr. Morris, because Gordon Morris is that voice. But today I said, Gordy, come around from behind the glass and join me in the studios. And, Gordy, you just did that. That's right. Uh, not too often I get to be on this <laughs> side of the glass or in the, on the program, other well, than the introduction. Your voice is well known by the special announcements and the carrying on of the network information and just good to kind of relax and be be uh, just without a script today. That's great. Well, Gordy, uh, you being a preacher's kid, and I was a preacher's kid too, so uh, we can we can start today's program with your thoughts about our fathers. And uh, I know that your dad pastored the uh, was it Cleveland Avenue Presbyterian Church, right, an old uh, United Presbyterian denomination church mm-hmm. from years ago in, uh, here in Milwaukee, in the Milwaukee area, and several other churches across the middle part of the country. When I first, met you, I first met you, you were in high school yet. That's right. <laughs> and uh, you were not much out of it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but we have worked together over these many decades. and uh, But, you know, we have memories about our dad. And uh, I thought, if opening the program today, that you would share some of your heart, memories about a dad who was a very faithful servant of the Lord. He was a pastor for many years, uh, his first uh, church right after World War II, and uh, mission church and actually mission supported church uh, struggling mm-hmm. in, in Kansas and then in Iowa and then here in Wisconsin. Then he was involved with another church in Illinois and uh, an associate pastor at another church before finally retiring way back into the 1980s, uh, early 90s. Mm-hmm. And then uh, retiring and finally uh, in a nursing home and uh, in a memory unit, as a matter of fact. Got sure. some, had some wonderful times with him, though, even taking him on trips and Passed away nearly 92 years old a few years back. Oh, my. Probably one of them, uh, he, he loved the Lord. He also loved nature. He knew a lot about plants and and uh, the natural things. We loved the mountains and camping, that sort of thing. But I would not be here if it were not for, for him. That's right. And I think I may have told you this story, but when I was about five years old uh, in Kansas, that first political location, that first parsonage, um, I was doing one of the things that little boys do. I was playing radio station. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> had a, you know, a can on the stick and had a mic- sure. alarm clock and went off and the program was supposed to be done. Things like that. Been very, there. very professional radio. Been there, done that. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but uh, when I when I finished doing that, my dad said, you know, you, you really did a good job. You really did a good job playing radio station. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I was encouraged enough to say, I want to be a radio announcer when I grow up. And uh, a few years later, he mentioned that when he'd been in Chicago... Uh, before he went to seminary, he had actually attended some classes in Moody Bible Institute and mentioned that there was such a thing as a Christian radio station because they had one there. And so then I wanted to have my own Christian radio station. Well, <laughs> over the years I learned I didn't want to have my own station. There's too many headaches, and as you know. Yes. Well, no. But, yes. but uh, the, the course was set uh, for Christian broadcasting, and, and uh, the Lord just straight as an arrow uh, right through school and, and even even in the military leading towards towards where I am right now, and, and I just praise the Lord for, for that early encouragement. Now, how old were you when that happened? About five years old. Do you know something? This is uncanny, because hearing you tell this mm-hmm. story, and I've never told you this, but uh, in Virginia, Minnesota, when I was four years old, Dad was had a little storefront church, and uh, he went on the radio, WHLB mm-hmm. radio. And I remember looking through the window of this big, interesting room with the big turntables and the big microphone and the man sitting there. And then I saw mother and dad go into this other studio and they sang and they dad spoke, etc. cetera. And uh, uh, about a year or so later, I was invited to sing a duet with my mother on the radio. <laughs> I had to stand yeah. on a chair. Right, right. But uh, as a kid, I always had a great appreciation. And there's some unique thing about radio. How in the world did we end up spending the rest of our life in it? 
Well, I don't know. I, I should maybe mention that we may even have listeners in that town in Kansas, Garnett. Sure. Which is on the fringe areas of our Fort Scott station. I know we've occasionally had response from Garnett, so who knows? Maybe somebody's there who remembers when uh, Willard Morris was the pastor of oh, the, the Presbyterian Church there many, many years ago. Lots of memories there, Gordy, and I want to thank you for sharing that. We uh, are uh, going to be opening our microphones in just a few minutes for folk to call in with memories about their fathers. Uh, the one memory that I have, and I, I think I shared this some weeks ago on Memorial Day, was uh, we had gone to the Memorial Day service in our little home cemetery at Cook, Minnesota. And uh, Mom had been invited to sing, and Dad was uh, leaning against the old pine tree, which was right on the corner of the family grave plot. And uh, Dad was standing there as Mom had been invited to sing, and uh, they had one of these little pedal organ things that you'd sit down and, and you pedal with both feet to create the air pressure, and and then it was a little reed organ, and Mom was asked to sing, and so she accompanied herself and sang a song about Jesus. And uh, as she began to sing, Dad noted that the people drew closer to hear the message of the song. We got home uh, just before noon, and Mom said to Dad, uh, Oscar, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make some sandwiches. Would you like something to eat? And Dad, for some strange reason, says, uh, no, I don't think so. And uh, he said, I just want to be alone. And so Dad didn't eat at the table. My brother and I had a sandwich, and then Mom said, we're going to go out for a walk. And uh, 45 minutes later, we came back to the house, and there was Dad sitting at the piano playing a song that you'll hear in a moment. The tears running down his face, and that song, the words and the music, Dad always said it came pour, poured into his heart from the Lord, a little song about the name of Jesus. The song there at the little country cemetery was was the inspiration at that moment as he saw people drawn to hearing the song about Jesus. Today there's a gravestone there at the family plot where mom and dad are buried and on that gravestone are written the words, a name I highly treasure, because it was right there where God inspired him with that song, the one that you'll hear right now, a name I highly treasure. shall shine and shine eternally. My heart is stirred when I think of Jesus, that blessed name which sets the captive free. No name 
A Name I Only Treasure, written by my father many, many years ago in the late 40s. And uh, just uh, in his later years, Cliff Barrows called him one day and asked if he and Mom would come down to Minneapolis and would uh, attend a special evening in the Minneapolis Auditorium where the crusade was being held with the Graham Crusade and the choir, over a thousand members, along with Cliff and uh, George Beverly Shea, and they sang that very song, A Name I Highly Treasure. Well, those are memories, but it's kind of selfish for us to sit here and just talk personally about these things, but why don't we open the phones and find out what memories you may have about your father? And we're going to open the lines right now, and our phone number, 800 733 Nine eight two nine eight hundred seven three three nine eight two nine, and uh, maybe you'd like to call and give uh, some honorable mention of your father, things that you remember. Maybe just a, an experience. Maybe it's a thought. Maybe it's a lesson. Something that God used to touch your life, as uh, your father had uh, that ministry to you. Maybe it was just a ministry of of of. of order and, and, and encouragement. It might have been a ministry of teaching you, I, I think, of some of the mechanical skills that uh, my grandfather used to, to do. He was a blacksmith. And uh, I remember as a little kid, I'd come and help cranking the forge. And I remember Dad had many mechanical skills as well. But many of you have remembrances of things that your father taught you or things that your father did for you. And today our phone lines are jammed, literally jammed. And as you call from across the country, take that moment, 800-733-9829, 800-733-9829. And we'll take your your thoughts and comments uh, very quickly as, as uh, we will probably have many, many phone calls coming in here. But uh, that's what's happening today. And uh, actually, we've got a break coming up in about a minute and so uh, we'll just get the lines all loaded up here. Again, the number 800-733-9829, and we'll be glad to have your call. Thoughts about your father. Thoughts about things that he provided for you. Maybe he wasn't a man of a lot of conversation, but his faithfulness and support and encouragement. There have been folk who had a father who didn't know the Lord, but he was kind and gentle and uh, was a man who encouraged them. Uh, what a joy it is to hear people contact us and tell us how that uh, their father came to know the Lord in their later years. And uh, someone just recently sent me a letter that said their father had been listening to VCY America Radio and uh, at age 91 found the Lord. We'll be right back after the break, and we'll take your phone calls, 800-733-9829. to Genesis with Dr. John Morris, president of the Institute for Creation Research. Dr. Morris, was Albert Einstein the greatest scientist who ever lived? It's hard to say, Chris. There have been so many. Interestingly, Einstein's theory is based on one important assumption, that the speed of light is the only constant in the universe. Time changes, space changes, mass changes, but the speed of light, it's constant. And now scientists have discovered some reasons to think that the speed of light is not constant. Many are taking this seriously. What will come of it remains to be seen, but it is interesting. Now, some creationists have long proposed changes in the speed of light, although it's difficult to be certain. Stars were created, and therefore starlight was created on day four, and man was able to see it by day six. And that really did happen back in Genesis. For more on Genesis, visit our website at icr.org. This is Chris O'Brien. Thanks for going back to Genesis. And welcome back to Crosstalk. And uh, wouldn't you believe it, our computer's acting up this <laughs> today, but we're uh, using Plan B and it's working okay. Let's go to Alexandria, South Dakota, and talk with Larry. And Larry, welcome to Crosstalk. Thank you. Yeah, I 
wanted to say that my dad died when I was real young. And, uh, but before he died, he introduced me to the true father, Daddy Jehovah. Amen. And, uh, I'm so grateful that he did introduce me to the Father in heaven. Amen. And that's all I got to say. Well, Larry, thank you because uh, you can look forward to seeing your father again. Yep. God bless you. Thanks. Th- thanks very much for the call. Let's go to line number three. Christine in Baraboo. Hello. Hello, Christine. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, as soon as you mentioned fathers, I, my heart just and did a flip-flop. My father passed away when he was 59, but when I was only four years old, I was very, very sick, and I remember that he and my mother were taking me to the doctor's office, and um, while we waited, my father held me wrapped up in a white sheet, and I had a collapsed lung and spent six days in the hospital, Mm. but I will never forget that day, and then there were many, many times later that uh, my father was taking Hawaiian steel guitar lessons, and I picked it up, and I was soon playing the same songs that he was playing, and he decided that I should take the lessons, <laughs> and he would follow me. And uh, even when I was a baby, uh, I was child number two, and since it was another girl, because baby number one was also a girl, he told my mother, he says, if the next one isn't a boy, I'm going to put overalls on Christine, and she will be our boy. (laughs) Luckily, I had a brother the third time around, and then another younger sister later. And so I do have many happy memories with my father. He was not a Christian in the early years, and my mother and the rest of us prayed for him for many, many years, and he did uh, choose to follow the Lord before he passed away of a heart attack at age 59. Mm. So praise the Lord for my father. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Okay, we're going to move right along to line number four, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and uh, talking to Lorraine. Lorraine, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Just fine. And I would just like to say my father was a Christian. He was my pastor uh, for the first 13 years of my life. Hmm. Um, He's the man who baptized me. My father was a man of integrity. What he said... If, if he said it, we knew that that was the way it was. And he took very, very good care of us. He set an example for us. He provided for us. He worked. He was bivocational. And I just really thank God that I had the father that I did because I see so many who have not had that example in their life. And I just praise the Lord for the gift that I had with the Father that he gave me. Lorraine, thank you. God bless you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. From Hattiesburg, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, we're going to go back to line one to Pasco, Washington, and talk with Violet. And Violet, you're on the air. Hello. Yes, how are you today? Just great. I just wanted to say a little bit about my daddy. I didn't have him very long. He died when I was eight years old. Hmm. And uh, he was was a great daddy as far as I know, but uh, I I just wanted to, you know, I think he was saved. I'm not sure, but uh, I've got a great husband now. He's taken the place of my daddy. Hmm. So, uh, and and the Lord has given us six great kids and and a preacher boy out of uh, all six of them. That is so neat. Well, I am so grateful that you called Violet from Pasco, Washington. Yes, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks for the call. Mm-hmm. Have some open lines, 800-733-9829, if you'd like to call. Just sharing some thoughts about your childhood, your father, this coming Father's Day. And uh, there are there are memories, I'm sure, that you'd like to share. Uh, we're going to move right along now to Betty in Johnson City, Tennessee. And Betty, you're on the air. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you, first of all, for VCY America and for the songs that you play that your father wrote, hmm. because they are such a blessing. Uh, I was the first one saved in my family when I was uh, 12 years old. 
My parents were not Christians. And then in a couple or three years, my dad, my fam, my mom and dad got saved. And in years and years and years later, Daddy said, do you know that if you hadn't gotten saved, I never would have. Wow. And my dad lived to be 83. We lost him several years ago in 1995. But... Um, My husband, his, his, his father, was my father, too. We, we hate in-law jokes <laughs> because uh, there is no such thing in a family that has a father-in-law who is a Christian and a fine man. And so, I mean, I had two fathers, and my husband has been a wonderful father to our mm. children and grandchildren and grandchildren. So it's it's just been a blessing from the Lord and I am laying here. I broke my hip last Thursday. Oh no. Oh yes. <laughs> but I'm doing very well. Uh they put three screws in it and and I got to come home on Monday. My husband has vascular dementia mm. and the beginning stages of Parkinson. Mm-hmm. And he has a lot of trouble with memory. He was a pastor for 25 years and then was a lay worker for years. And so uh, he is just my life. And I know that God's going to take him home, and I don't think it's going to be very long. But I just am so thankful for the years that we've had. So now I'll let somebody else have a turn, and God bless. Well, thank you so much for the call. God bless you. Thank you. Let's go to Jeannie, I make it Janine in uh, Milwaukee on line one. Our phone number 800 733 If you'd like to make a tribute to your father, memories, uh, 800 733 And Janine, you're on the air. Hi, Vic. Uh, I just want to say uh, my father's been gone for over 10 years, and I remember him taking us to church while well, my mother and and bringing us up to the Lord and doing the best he could. I, I, I miss him so much. And I want to comment about that song that you played that your father wrote. That song has been a blessing to me for so long. It just brings a tear to my eyes and such strength that comes from hearing that song. And I want to thank you for playing it. And keep keep up the good work in your ministry for the Lord. Well, God bless you. Hey, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Janine. Appreciate that. A song that uh, lifts up the Lord Jesus and uh, the fact that his name is above every name. And at that name, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's go to Trish in Ohio. Trish, what part of Ohio? Um, Actually, I'm from Columbus, but I'm way up in the boonies. Um, Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And so I grew up in Columbus, and my dad, um, my parents were were very, very honorable people. We were poor, literally, but very honorable people that everybody respected. And my father had such a high sense of integrity, and he just worked so hard, and he did so much with us kids. And one of the biggest things I remember about him is him holding my hand um, and just through everything. I was badly burned when I was a child. He'd sit next to my bed and sing to me, Patricia, Patricia, my darling, you make all my dreams come true. And and he he just loved us kids so much. Everybody said, you got the good father. Hmm. But um, yeah, I also remember him going through uh, areas where there were homeless. At that time, they called them bombs or hobos. And he would come back, back without his coat or without his gloves, you know, and um, because he would give them away to them and even bring people home on Thanksgiving. Uh, that we, we had no clue who they were, but he'd be out getting something, you know, and, and come back home with um, people who had no place else to go. And most of my parents died in 2002. Um, both of them knew the Lord. And in my dad's wallet, which I still have, and I'm looking at now this old beat-up brown wallet, you know how a lot of people, most people, will put their uh, driver's license in um, one side of the old wallets and in the other side, I don't know, um, maybe at that time a credit card. And my dad has this dog-eared picture of the, you know, the head of Jesus that we all remember from Solomon's, the Bible. Solomon's head of Christ, uh-huh. 
Yeah, and mm-hmm. um, Lord's Prayer on back, and it is just dog-eared from him taking it out and saying, this is my best friend. Mm-hmm. And um, on the other side, there's a, a poem about the cross in my pocket with a little wooden cross on it. And it got so dog-eared, he had to cover it with um, with plastic tape all over. And mm-hmm. that was my dad. Oh, bless Thank you for letting me tell about him. He- Thanks so much, Trish. God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Let's uh, go to Pamela, who's on the road uh, from Wisconsin, on the road to South Dakota. Hi, Pamela. Hi there. How are you? Just fine, thank you. Where are you headed in South Dakota? I'm headed towards the Burke Winter area. Oh, okay. Yep, we're we're avid fans of your show. Well, God bless you. Tell us... What I I wanted to share about my father is that, I guess from the earliest years, I remember him picking me up and smelling Old Spice. And um, I don't know if they even still make Old Spice, but whatever. I mean, I just remember that that so vividly, the smell right up next to his neck when he picked me up as a little girl. And then my dad, he sacrificed so much. He was a farmer, or he still is a farmer rancher at the age of 71. And he sacrificed so much that I could go to a private parochial school um, so that I could be around other Christian kids and and just really develop some really crucial Christian values. And I'll, I'll just never... I just can't thank him enough. And one of my, as an adult, one of my fondest memories is now every Sabbath morning, um, he works so hard during the week, but we have one pastor who's at our church about every three to four weeks. It's one of those very, very small churches that just um, does without a pastor and relies heavily on its deacons. And every Sabbath morning, he'd have an accordly out, his Sabbath school accordly in his Bible, and he would be up before everybody else. I could just see him just studying and, and preparing so that he could could teach on behalf of you know, the pastor being absent. And I just admire my dad so much for all he does, not just for our family, but for people in our community. And he's just so well-loved. Pamela, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. You have a wonderful mm-hmm. Father's Day, too. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And let's go to line four, where Lisa in West Allis, Wisconsin. Lisa, you're on the air. Hello. Hello, Vic. Yeah, uh, tell you what, hold the line, Lisa. We have a break right now, and we'll pick it up right on the other side of the break, okay? Thank you. When it comes to the topic of origins, why shouldn't Christians accept millions of years? Couldn't God have used evolution? What about the gap theory? Could God really have created everything in six days? Cain's wife, who was she? Was there really a Noah's Ark and flood? Why does God's creation include death and suffering? Over two dozen diverse questions are addressed in the New Answers book, Volume 1. As a matter of fact, Ken Ham, the editor of this book, said that next to the Bible, this New Answers book, Volume 1, is the most important book for people to read and understand on the topic of creation and origins. Leading apologists answer these questions biblically and logically in a simple-to-read format, including charts and diagrams. Copies of the New Answers book, Volume 1, are available from VCY for a donation of $18 or more by calling 1-800-729-9829. That's toll-free. 1-800-729-9829. And welcome back to Crosstalk, where today we're having an electronic Father's Day Remembrance card, I guess you'd call it. But uh, talking with folk and uh, standing by there in West Allis is Lisa. So, Lisa, go right ahead. Thank you for this opportunity to talk about our fathers. I would like to encourage all of the people out there who may be listening who, rather than rejoicing about their fathers, are grieving about their fathers, whether their lack of relationship with their earthly father Mm. or their lack of relationship with their heavenly father. Just to speak from experience that even when I didn't know my father, God, in heaven when I was a child. He was still my father. He was still watching out for me. He was keeping me alive. He was helping me 
through circumstances, even though I couldn't see him. And he raised me. And though I had an earthly father who I was very distant from, please don't give up on your fathers. I want to encourage everyone. Don't give up on your earthly fathers. Don't give up on your heavenly father. Keep praying for your earthly father to be saved or whatever the need may be. And keep reaching up and keep looking up for your heavenly father, for he will never forsake you. He will never abandon you. And I speak this as truth from experience. I want to encourage everyone out there who is struggling or grieving this Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for those kind words. Let's uh, move along uh, back to Burns, Wisconsin, and talk with Henry. Henry, you're on the air. Hello? Yes, sir. You're on the air, Henry. Hello? Yes. Yes. Uh, this is Henry and Barnes. We, uh, I was thinking of my, of my father because uh, he was a very devout uh, Christian also, and we came from a, a very big family of ten children, mm-hmm. and I'm one of those right near the end. In fact, I often say I'm Henry the eighth child of ten. Um. But uh, my, I always remember my dad was very interested in the book of Job, spent quite a bit of time. And I was thinking to myself as I got older, because I said, well, he, Job had a very big family also, as in our family, but uh, it uh, was a sad day when my father died, but uh, I was uh, ordained into the ministry uh, two days, well, it would be it was 66, 62nd anniversary, it was yesterday, and then my father was at the ordination, and he went back home to Ironwood, Michigan, and uh, the next day had a stroke, and he died, so... Just like God permitted him to be alive to be at my ordination. That's wonderful. I was very thankful and grateful to that. Sure. Well, Henry, thank you. Thank you for sharing those thoughts about your dad. All right. God bless you. Let's go to Hartford, Wisconsin, and Joseph. Joseph, standing by. Joseph, you're on the air. Yes, Brother Vic. Uh, I'd just like to say uh, thanks to you to the greatest father that ever is and ever will be, and that's our Father in Heaven. Amen. We owe so much to Him. It's it's just wonderful to have such a such a wonderful Father who takes care of us, and I'm grateful every day for Him. You are uh, so so well spoken. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Vic. Thank you. Bye bye now. Moving along to, uh, let's see, giant line number three here is uh, Judy in Mobile, Alabama. Judy, you're on the air. I'm in the car in a rainstorm. If you can't hear me and that's a problem, I'll just hang up. No, you're doing fine. Okay, I'd just like to say uh, what a godly um, man my father was. He uh, was a man that uh, he didn't take his kids or his wife to church and go back and get him. He stayed with him. Hmm. Uh, he was, uh, and, and I knew I was going to cry. <laughs> hmm. He was a wonderful Sunday school teacher. And I, I had the minister's wife tell me one time, I'm sorry, after he passed away, that uh, he was the greatest Sunday school teacher she had ever heard. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to I'd say what a godly man and a great father he was, and thank God for giving him to me. Oh, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. You're you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye now. They're in a rainstorm down there in Mobile, Alabama. We're going to move on to line number four, and David standing by in Kenosha. David, you're on the air. Hi, Vic. Uh, I thought of my father in just a little to describe him, born in 1914, German Republican accountant. A very a great example in integrity, hardworking, faithful, and married to my mom almost 50 years. So, and he lived to be 90. Uh, he passed on. He lived at the Alexian Village up there in Milwaukee. He had left Kenosha at age 80 because most of his friends had uh, died. And if there's any young people out there, I, I share this in the public school when I have liberty, but honor thy father and mother that the days of thy life would be long Mm -hmm. on the face of this earth. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, David. Good advice and uh, honoring your father. There are those who will turn or have uh, alienation or whatever it is. But uh, I think of the story of the of the prodigal and how uh, the warm the warm relationship restored as uh, the repentant prodigal came and said, "I've sinned. I want to be restored." And uh, those relationships we praise God for. Let's uh, go back to line number one, Bill in Pennsylvania. Bill, you're on the air. Thank you, Vic, for taking my call. I want to thank the Lord for my father. I don't know to this day whether he was a Christian or not. He died 51 years ago this past Sunday. But uh, my mother enrolled me in a school for orphan boys here in Pennsylvania after that, and I had men there that were fathers to me. And after I graduated from there, I got got married, and I had a father-in-law that was a father to me for better than 35 years. So I just thank God for the three fathers that I did have in my lifetime. Well, thank B- you for your programming. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so much. From Pennsylvania, we go to the state of Minnesota, up in Aurora, Minnesota, and we'll talk with John. John, you're you're, you're on the air, John. Thank you so much. Uh, John, turn, uh, please. Go to the state <laughs> okay, John, uh, if you would, please turn the radio down completely. Hello, John. Hello? Yes, you're on the air, sir. Is this Vic? That's right. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I, what I wanted to say there myself, there, well, my my father, he died three months before I was born, so my, my mother was my father and my mother. You sure. Know, and then she died at five, so I was I was th- thrown to the witches there. I was thrown 11 years in the Catholic orphanage here. Hmm. And I, I, I turned around and I went to the service, came back, and then I came up to Aurora, Minnesota here. And I... I, I uh, uh, met some friends there that told me I was a, a Christian, a strong Catholic, mm. and and they led me to the Lord there, and I've been saved for about forty five years. Oh, amen. And and it's what I want to say is, uh, people there, apart next to rather to uh, bring in honor and glory and worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ there, their heavenly Father, mm. is to. Glorify their mom and dad there, because they're they're when they're they're precious there, they're worth their weight in gold as far as I'm concerned. So, but, but anyhow, uh, yeah, I, I, and I work with social services there in Virginia, in uh, uh, for about eleven, twelve years mm-hmm. as a mentor, and and uh, I seen a lot a lot of things there that that uh, really broke my heart. But anyhow, I, I just wanted to let you know there, and and w- one thing I want to let you know at the end. I'm looking forward to see you there well, next week there in Virginia. And we're going to be there in Virginia at the at the Grace and Truth the Bible Church right. on Sunday yeah. morning. And I, then... I know that whole group there, you know. And, okay. and I, I, I was hoping to have been down in, in uh, Missouri there and was down there, but I couldn't make it there. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, God uh, bless you, John. We'll look forward to seeing you next and, week. And, and, and I enjoy your program for a, lot, a long time. And every once in a while there when I can, I'm retired there, but limited income, but... I, 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 I throw a little money for you there, you know, and well, whatever I can. So. Well, bless you. Yeah, that, that, the, best, the best for you. I'm, thank I'll you, John. I'll you there, too. Thank you, John. We'll see you next week. Keeps the old transmitter running there in Cook, Minnesota. Interesting place. Every once in a while we find a snake in the transmitter room, and uh, whenever they cli- the snake climbs into the high-voltage vault, the transmitter will go off the air, but the snake becomes barbecued very quickly. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, go to line three. Brian in Milwaukee. Brian. Hi there. I just wanted to share a proverb. There's a proverb that says, uh, the glory of old men are their children's children, but the glory of children are their fathers. And I wasn't fortunate enough to grow up with a, with any form of a father, but um, I've been a Christian for about 14 years, right with the Lord for a little over two. And I'm having a very uh, good time getting to know my Heavenly Father. And, and I do want to encourage the dads that are out there, you know, <laughs> um, Try your best to be an example to your kids, because once you lose them, it's tough to get them back. Hmm. And uh, I'm going through some challenges right now with my children. I have three beautiful daughters the Lord has blessed me abundantly with, but, um, again, I walked away from them for so many years, and, and the pain and hurt I, I caused them. Um, I have to live with that every day. And, and by God's grace, I'm, you know, they're, they're slowly but surely, um, their hearts are leaning towards me, and uh, you know, I just praise the Lord for that. But 
God has put a special place in a child's heart for their fathers. Mm. Um, and we need to be, as Christian men, an example to our children. Because if we mess that up, you know, they're going to have a really a skewed view of what a Heavenly Father is like, mm. who will never leave them, never forsake them. And if we do it contrary to the way God would do it, they're going to have a tough time relating to God's, you know, perfectness and, and the way He does things. And I'm, I'm just living with some of my past choices now, and, mm. and I just... I want to encourage the fathers out there, you know, just seek the Lord's face and let him, let the Lord love your children through you as a yielded vessel. So I praise the Lord for for what he's done in my life, and I just hope that uh, all the fathers out there would just be blessed um, by the fact that God has trusted them with with his children. So um, God God bless you, Vic. God bless you, Brian. Thank you so much. Uh, we move along. We're going to go to line four, Marla in Kennewick, Washington. And uh, Marla, you're on the air. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, I want to say uh, Happy Father's Day to everybody. Mm-hmm. And my dad is in heaven, but uh, I say it to everybody, to the saved and the unsaved fathers. And if you don't know the Lord, just come to him. Mm-hmm. And I want to also... Uh, say in in memory of my husband who passed away last year on on today, June the 15th of 2010, and he was in a nursing home for 11 years, Hmm. but I praise God because he was a real witness there, and he lived his life before others, and he really taught me a lot of things, and I'm still learning things that he told me. And I just, uh, I just love him. I'm still, you know, kind of in grief yet. But sure. I praise God that I can talk today, and I just encourage everybody. I love your fathers while they're alive, mm. and also your husbands, because when they're gone, you do have a vacancy there. But God does heal, and He does keep us. And I am going through a lot of battles and trials, but God's really helped me. And that's one thing he said to me. He said, honey, how are you going to go on without me? And I said, well, we have the Lord, and I've just got to trust the Lord Hmm. and just follow him and stay with him. And that's my biggest desire is to love the Lord. I don't care. I have lost friends because I stood up for the Lord and family, too. But, you know, God takes the place of that. Amen. He is our Heavenly Father. God bless you, Marla. Thank you so much. From Kennewick, Washington, we'll take a break, and we've got more calls coming in from Utah, Wisconsin, and the state of Washington. We'll be right back. For the Worldview Weekend Minute, I'm Brandon House. Our website is worldviewweekend.com. Today, we look at number 13 on our list of 20 characteristics of false teachers. Number 13, false teachers embrace moralizing. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 through 22 speaks to this. For if after they've escaped the pollutions of the world, meaning moralizing, they've cleaned up their life in some man-centered way, not through faith and repentance in Christ, but they've cleaned up their life through a self-help type program, man-centered works, they then what happens? They return right to their sin, just as a sow having washed to her wallowing in the mire. In other words, these false teachers may be about trying to proclaim good works and good things, but they themselves are lost. They've cleaned up their life through man-centered efforts, not through faith and repentance in Christ. And so the end result for these false teachers is, after their moralizing, they return to their sin. I'm Brandon House. And welcome back to Cross Talk, where today you have the opportunity to honor your father with uh, just a thought, perhaps a, a word of thankfulness as you call. The number 800 733 9829. Let's go right now, I believe, uh, to line number one, and this is uh, uh, Marilyn. Marilyn in Beaver, Utah. Uh, is that right? Beaver, Utah? Marilyn? Hello. Hi there. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I would like to thank the Lord for giving me the wonderful parents that he did, especially my father, who was a very kind and generous man. And my father was there always for us. And 
and we were always uh, number one with him. He taught me how to ballroom dance, and I will never forget that. My parents were wonderful um, amateur ballroom dancers, and I just thank the Lord that um, uh, he did so much for us, and he was just, just kind and caring, and I thank my sister most of all, who led my parents out of the uh, faith that we were in um, when she was with Campus Crusade for Christ in high school. So they heard the gospel, so I know they were saved when they passed away um, 12 years ago. So I'm just I'm just thankful for the Lord. I'm thankful that we here in Beaver have this wonderful Christian radio station to uh, listen to and to guide us. So I just have many blessings and, and just being thankful for everything that I have and and the memory of my parents. Marilyn, thank you. Thank, thank you so much for that call. Beaver, Utah. And then let's move right along to uh, Sandy in Tri-City, Washington. And Sandy, you're on the air. Yes, hi. I remember my father, Bill Ingalls, um, he just been such a great dad. He was such a hard worker. As a child, he used to go out and lay on the hard ice and change uh, tires on trucks going over the pass to make a living. And then he had a gas station. He worked such long, hard hours. And as a child, I remember every night, even though he was beaten, he probably just wanted to fall into bed. Before he went to bed, he would come to each one of us kids' room, and he would plant a kiss on our cheek or our forehead. Mm. I always felt so loved. And as I grew up, he taught, gave us the love of gardening, vegetable gardening and flowers. And... um He's just been such a a good dad, and I would like to ask people to pray for him because he's failing in health, and he is um, doesn't know the Lord yet, and my heart is so heavy for him to come to know the Lord. He paid for our Christian schooling, and he lived by himself to do it and sent us miles away to be able to go to a Christian school because the public school was so rotten in the area where we lived, and he was so lonely, And um, but he did that for us. And um, so anyways, if if you all could pray for him, his name is Bill, I would so appreciate it. People pray for Bill that he might come to know the Lord. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Uh Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Prayer request. Let's go to uh, Exonia, Wisconsin, and talk with Anna. Anna, you're on the air. Oh, praise the Lord, and I'm laughing and crying at the same time. This is amazing. Um, Praise the Lord and pat the pack boots. I'm from northern Minnesota myself, up in... (laughs) Near Saginaw, oh. um, in the middle of the North Woods. Mm-hmm. I, my daddy raised two, uh, I'm going to cry here, but I'm praising the Lord through it. Um, raised two girls in um, on a ranch that he created up there, and and I'm, I'm praising him for for the nice little country church we got to go to up there. And um, um, my sister passed away three years ago, and she sounded just like, a girl that just called in, praising the Lord for her daddy, and her name was Lisa. Oh, my. And uh, that's why I'm laughing and crying at the same time, and she sounded just like my sister's voice. Oh, my. So praise the Lord for DCY, and, and um, again, yes, pray for all the unsaved dads, because I don't know if my daddy is saved either. He is um, he is a wonderful man, and I love him dearly. But, yes, everybody pray for all the unsaved fathers. What's an, a, fir- and, a first name? Um, Robert. Okay. We'll remember to pray for Robert. God knows the last name. Ha- ha- pardon me? God knows the last name. That, that's right. That's mm. right. And happy va- happy Valentine's Day. Mm. Listen to me. Happy Father's Day, Vic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Okay. Moving right along. And uh, let's see. Uh don't know. Let's see. I, the the call is coming in right now. Our telephone number. We have just about two minutes remaining in the program, and uh, I'm not sure. Let's see if we have uh, Carol. Carol in West Allis. Carol, you're on the air. Carol. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. I say, Dad, thank you for protecting me from all the bad guys. Thank you for being the best friend I could ever have. Thank you for taking me on that lonely path with Jesus. Hmm. Thank you for teaching me truth. Your legacy will live on and build in my marriage, Carol. Hmm. Thank you. God bless you, Carol. Well, it's been an interesting program, folks, and we're out of time. I want to thank each and every one of you for for just sharing your heart today. And uh, we think of fathers, I think of my dad, uh, uh, and all the years of uh, 
time that we spent together, of course, and then afterwards, knowing his prayers followed me in the area of ministry. One of the things I'm so thankful for from both of my parents that they never pushed or tried to suggest any direction in my life, but simply prayed, please, Lord, guide Vic into whatever whatever work that you have for him to do. And uh, those are the kind of experiences that that uh, we as as kids can be very thankful for because the prayers of our of our fathers, the prayers of our mothers, the prayers that uh, literally have been used of God in the shaping and directing of our our ship as we travel across the sea of life. And so these moments today, I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to call and uh, for each and every one who's had kind words to say about their fathers. And uh, as was so well put, how we can think in terms of our heavenly father, those who may be fatherless or those who uh, were orphaned in early years, but have found the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to be the father to the fatherless. And so I want to thank each and everyone for joining us today. Be in prayer for those dads whose first names were given. And uh, you heard it. And I know that the Lord hears and know, he knows the last names. But God can work. As I said earlier, the report of a man who was in his 90s just coming to the Lord Jesus before the Lord took him home. So we can trust the Lord as uh, we pray and intercede for those that we love. Thanks for joining us today on a very special program here on Crosstalk. to Crosstalk via satellite and the internet from BCY America. Views expressed may or may not be those of this station. For a CD of today's program, send a donation of $6 or more to BCY Tape Ministry, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208. Or download by RSS or podcast from crosstalkamerica.com. And join us again for Crosstalk. Crosstalk.